this presentation, we're going to be looking at some of the improvements that have been made to the skinning workflow inside of Maya 2011. The first tool that we're going to be looking at is Interactive Skin Bind. With Interactive Skin Bind, I'm going to get an initial skin weighting using volume manipulators. By adjusting the shape, length, and position of the volume manipulators in the viewport, I'm going to be defining the areas of the mesh that are affected by each joint or each influence. You'll notice that as I'm working with this tool, it has a, uh, it's by default mirroring across the hierarchy, which is uh, actually really useful. And we're just going to simply use some of the manipulator handles on these shapes to go ahead and define the region of influence for each joint. So I know I don't want my shoulder joint to affect the arm quite that much, and I definitely don't want it coming across the, the center line of my skeleton. So we'll kind of zero that out. If I grab the blue handle and I hold down my shift key while I'm grabbing, it allows me to non-proportionally scale it. So I'll do the same thing down here and we'll kind of pull that effect across. And we'll just kind of pull that into that area. And uh, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and see what type of deformation this is going to give me. So the interactive skin binding is going to help you achieve a really good result very quickly. And once you've established the rough weighting using the manipulators, we're going to want to refine that using the paint weight tools. So if we right mouse click on top of the piece of geometry, we can enter into our skin weighting tool. And there's been several changes to this tool that we're going to be looking at. One of the most important is the fact that we have multiple types of doing normalization now. So previously in Maya, we were always doing an interactive normalization. So now what we're doing is we're doing a post-normalization. And this lets Maya defer the normalization calculation until you deform the mesh. This lets you continue to paint weights and adjust the interactive bind without the normalization process changing the previous skin weighting that you've done. So it essentially it means the tools, the skinning tools are much more stable than they were in previous versions of Maya. The influencer list has a couple of different ways of viewing it now. So we have alphabetical and hierarchy like we did previously, and we now have a new flat view. There's also the ability to filter out what you're going to see. So if I just do a S star, it's going to show me everything that begins with S, in this case, my spine joints. And we have the ability to pin the joints that you have selected. So by pinning them, it allows me to say, every time I come back into this piece of geometry to begin painting weights on this, show me those joints. So this is going to be very useful if you're working with a, a large rig. Say you have a rig that's got 200 joints in it, you're going to be working on the tail character, the tail of the character that's got 30 joints all day long. It would be really great if you could just pin those and every time you come back have those 30 joints displayed. So that's why we went ahead and added that, specifically for dealing with very large hierarchies. The next thing that we have is um, you know, some basic locking tools. So lock the joints so that they can't have waiting work done to them, unlocking, filtering or switching your, your selection to invert your selection. So a couple little buttons down here on the bottom that you're going to be using uh, several times if you're breaking a character. They're actually quite handy to have brought right up to the surface level. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at the radial pop-ups for the joints and the radial pop-ups that happen on top of the skeleton. So when I right mouse click on top of a joint, I get a new marker menu. So there's been some stuff added to this. Basically, I have select influence. That's going to be, let me go ahead and paint the characters waiting for that joint. To the right of that, I have the ability to select and deselect vertices. So this lets me do some basic masking operations. At the bottom of the list are a lot of the things that are on the left-hand tool settings on my screen right now. So the idea behind this is you don't have to keep going over to the tool settings to access um, the most commonly used functionality. You can get to it just with a marker menu. So we're going to go ahead and turn on Use Color Ramp. The use color ramp for this release has been, uh, has been changed a little bit, so we now have a gradient that we're using to represent the values of the vertices for that influence. So to the left is a value of zero, so obviously very low values are going to be painted in blue. The warmer it gets, the higher the value goes. And then we have two color swatches on either end of the gradient, so these allow you to set absolute values. So if it's achieving a value of, for, that, for that influence of 1, 100%, it's going to go ahead and draw in white. And then obviously if it's achieving a value of 0, it's going to draw in black. And you can define all of these colors yourself, and the idea is that it's going to give you a very immediate visual representation of is it zeroed out as 100%, are there very low weights there? So let's go ahead and start to paint some weights on this character. I want to fix up some of the weighting underneath this arm. And I'm going to use this selection of the vertices of that joint to mask out the areas that I can paint. So I don't want to have the, uh, the smoothing effect that I'm going to do bleed into this area of my character. I want to leave all those vertices unaff unaffected. 
So by turning on those or selecting those vertices, all the work that I'm going to do now, all the smoothing work that I'm going to do now is only going to affect the vertices um, that are basically highlighted. So we can kind of spin around the back of the arm here and paint across that region. Now the other thing that I can do is while I have this selection set up, I can go ahead and right mouse click on another joint and say, that's the influence I want to paint. So I'm going to be painting the weighting information for the collarbone now, but I only have the ability to modify the vertices that are highlighted, so modify the vertices that were attached to the arm joint. So in this case, I want to, I want to zero out the effect of that collarbone sort of on the back of this arm a little bit. So I'm painting at a value of 1. We'll just kind of drop that down to a, a really low value, and we'll kind of replace that in there. Notice that when I undo and redo this, how stable it is. That's one of the things that the post-normalization gives us, the ability to just be very... Uh, active with the undo and redo key while you're painting skin weights and you don't really ever get um, burned by it like you used to. So let's go ahead and um, just zero out the influence of that shoulder joint back there and then I'll just smooth it a little bit. So if I wanted to increase the region of area that I could paint, I could obviously just right mouse click on top of another joint and say add selected or if I wanted to peel that back away I could say deselect. So couple of little filtering operations that allow you to get these, these really quick pick masks. So let's go ahead and rotate this character around a bit and get some more extreme poses happening and look at another new feature inside of 2011 that's, uh, that's actually really very, very useful. If I spin this arm a good bit, you're going to see that I'm getting this kind of bow tying effect um, or a candy wrapper effect. And this happens with the, the classic linear skin clusters inside of Maya. So what we've done is we've added the ability to switch your skinning type from classic linear to dual quaternion. So as soon as I switch it over to dual quaternion, you can see that it's going to maintain that volume a lot better. And let's go ahead and just rotate this character around here on this upper body and get a pretty good rotation there. Notice when I rotate this, this upper joint here, the deformation doesn't look that great. So I want to fix that. I'm going to go back into my interactive skinning tools, grab that chest joint, and look at the chest joint. It doesn't have a lot of influence, so let's just increase the region that that chest joint's affecting, have it not affect the head. So we really cleaned that up very, very quickly. So let's go ahead and jump back and forth on this skin cluster between classic linear, Notice the, the cave-in that's happening here, so it's not maintaining volume. I've got this, this kind of candy wrapper effect happening. As soon as I switch over to dual quaternion, it looks a lot better. The third type is weight blended, and with weight blended, what we have is just a map that we can go ahead and paint to adjust the overall value of the dual quaternion. So by default, it's set to, uh, to zero, so essentially we're looking at linear skinning right now. If we go ahead and go back to my uh, paint weights tool, let's go and just flood this whole character with a value of 0.3. Then we're going to go back and paint a high value across the top of this arm joint here. I'm going to turn the fall off on my brush, increase the size of that guy, because I really want to just get a lot, of that, a lot of the dual quaternion in that region, sort of under here. Puff that volume back up really quickly. Then just go to my smooth tool, and we'll flood smooth that a few times. So... We'll jump between the three modes again. So uh, classic linear, full DQ solve, and then my painted map that's got a little bit less in the body and a little bit less on the underarm there. Go ahead and go back to our bind pose, and let's look at some other enhancements that have been made to, uh, to skinning inside of Maya. So we'll go ahead and grab uh, that piece of geometry in three joints. I'm going to go ahead and do a classic bind, in this case a smooth bind. Grab that joint and spin it. So what we have here is a, is a pretty traditional problem. Obviously, the vertices on this short was kind of close to the, to the left leg bone, so they're going along for the right of that left leg bone when we, when we deform it. And really what I want to have happen is the bottom edge of these shorts be kind of weighted 100% to each leg. So we're going to our paint weights tool. We'll jump back over to our skin weighting. And if we look at the influence for this, you can see that Obviously, um, there's some values here that we need to address. So I'm going to switch my mode out of the paint mode that I'm currently in into a select mode. So if I just right mouse click on a piece of geometry, I can go ahead and switch from paint mode to select mode. 
Now I'm still in my paint weights tool. I've just entered into a mode where I can select vertices to begin doing functions on them or operations on them. So in this example, we're going to go ahead and grab an edge. Actually, we'll start over here. And we'll do an edge loop select on that guy. So with that edge highlighted, if we come down here and we click on the left leg, you can see that the left leg's got a little bit of value. It's gonna, the value slider, if you're in select mode, is going to represent the overall average of the vertices that you have selected. So the left leg is pulling on those, those vertices a little bit. Obviously the right leg is going to have a pretty high value. So what we want to do is we want to just grab the slider and use it to adjust the weights of those vertices. We're going to do the same thing on the other side here. So we'll grab this, uh, grab this edge, do uh, an edge loop select, or a, a ring loop select. Again, the left leg is going to be the one that we're going to want to have a value go up to 100%. And we'll finish off by just grabbing an edge on the top here, doing that edge loop select. For this guy, we want to zero out the effect of the hips. So the next thing that we need to do is address this vertice problem that's happening right here. We're going to go ahead and grab these vertices, and I'm going to use a hammer tool to fix this spiker irregularity. What the hammer tool does is it, it takes vertices and it compares them to their neighbors and it gets the average of what's going on around them and pastes it into them. So we'll just go ahead and use the hammer tool to bang out that problem. We'll go back to our select influence and we'll rotate this leg up a little bit here. I got a little problem happening over here. So I'm going to go back into my select mode. I'm going to grab a vertice that I know that looks pretty good and I'm going to use that vertices weighting information to fix these vertices over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that vertices weighting information into a buffer. I'm going to right mouse click and say I want to select face. With that face selected, I'm just going to go ahead and simply paste on the vertice weighting information that I copied off of the, its vertice that was right below it. So let's go ahead and um, go back into my uh, rotate tool for this guy. I'll spin that leg around and you can see in a matter of a few seconds, we were able to address a lot of those problems. Obviously, we've got really nice deformations happening up here on this character because we've got that dual quaternion solve. The interactive bind gave me the ability to start this off very, very quickly. So those are a few of the improvements that were made to Maya for this release when it comes to doing skinning work.